Marissa. And I'm Carrie, and we're the Build Menu Gals. We're your budget-friendly meal planning experts. And today we're going to talk with you about how to save money on ingredients you have already purchased. So the plan for this is to explain how you can take ingredients that you've already purchased and save them. Because it happens. Everybody has produce that liquefies and meat that didn't get cooked up or, you know, sour cream that gets spoiled, those kinds of things. Right. The best menu planning in the world sometimes just goes south and you end up with things that you already spend money on and they're wasted. So we want to talk about ways that you can save money on um, these things. You can save okay. these things. So why don't you start by talking to us about produce. Produce is like the first thing to go. So right, you right. Um, you're right. Produce goes so quickly and sometimes we'll, um, we'll find something that's on sale and we'll want to stock up or we... We've, um, like you said, you know, had great plans to use that that um, tomato or that bell pepper, and we realized mm -hmm. we're just not getting to it on time. So, things like your bell pepper, um, your onion, mm -hmm. a tomato, you can see that this bell pepper is starting to get a little, um, soft. a little soft, mm -hmm. and but it's still perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So what? But you know, you're not going to use it within the next couple of days. So what you can do is you can go ahead and dice it. Mm -hmm. Um, chop it up and then you're going to want to put it on a, a cookie sheet, a tray, okay. and it's single layered. So kind of a flash freeze. And then put it in the freezer and mm -hmm. yes, you're going to flash freeze it. Okay. You can do that with a tomato, you can do it with onion, you can do it with garlic. Okay. Um, so you can actually buy this in bulk or if you if you grow your own or you go to a farmer's so market. That's great. For instance, the onions, mm -hmm. we buy them in bulk at Costco. A big, like 10 sure. pound bag and mm -hmm. we do go through a lot of onions but mm -hmm. usually there's two or three that we didn't finish and so this is a great way to save them up and use them to cook in some casseroles exactly. or saute right. later on. You're just going to freeze them in that single layer, put them in a freezer bag and then when you're ready for them you can just shake out however many you need. Okay. All right. Um, How about things like broccoli and cauliflower? That green beans and um, it, all the, all, yes, <laughs> <laughs> what, what you'll do is you'll um, you're going to cut them up okay. and then you're going to blanch them. So in other words, you're going to cook them in some boiling water for two okay. to three minutes and then you're going to dip them into some ice cold water. Okay. And then you will right away just put them into a freezer bag. All right. And put them in your freezer. Just freeze them. And that's as simple as that. Right. So they're ready to pull out and use in soups or casseroles or things right. like that. Yes. And you, you've saved mm -hmm. it. Exactly. So that's good. Um, an apple. If you have some apples that you all know you're not going to get to anytime soon, that you don't want them to, to go bad, you can just slice them up, okay. pour a little lemon juice over them, put them in a freezer bag, and there you go. Perfect. Okay, again, when you buy them in bulk sometimes, you, you enjoy them, but you just don't get to the end of the bag, and that's a great way to keep them from, from going right. to waste. Right. All right. Same thing with um, berries? Any kind of berry. Your strawberries, your blueberries, your blackberries. Um, you want to wash and dry them really well. You want to okay. make sure they're very dry. Okay. Then you want to put them on a, a cookie sheet right. and a single layer. Okay. Stick them in your freezer, do a flash freeze. Then you can put them in a freezer bag. Okay. And that's all there is to it. All right, great. And then talk to me about bananas because you and I have some different views on bananas. So teach me. Okay. Some would take a look at this very dark banana, very ripe, and say it's not any good. Mm. It is still perfectly good. Are you sure? I'm positive. Okay. This is the best kind of banana for a banana bread, okay. for banana muffins, right. um, even your smoothie. Once you put it into a smoothie, you're mm -hmm. not going to know what it looks like. Okay. As long as the peeling is still intact, it's it's just fine. Okay. It's going to have a better flavor, actually. But if you don't have time to go ahead and make the banana bread or, or what have you, mm -hmm. you can still peel it um, and put it in a freezer bag. I like to put about two bananas per freezer bag. Okay. And then I can just pull it out and put it in my smoothies. Or um, we, uh, my family loves to put it in pancake mix. Okay. So why just two? Why not a big baggie of uh, just chunk well, all your bananas? Well, they, they have a tendency to freeze together, and they're harder okay. to get apart. So, all right. so two you could certainly would be about right. you could certainly do that, but most mm -hmm. of the time, for any type of recipe, you're not going to want more than two bananas. Okay. All right. Now, if you have one that's um, ripening about like this, okay. uh, maybe your kids won't eat it because Mine it's won't got, eat it if it has a brown it's spot. It's a single right. brown spot, mm -hmm. but sometimes kids won't eat it. Mm -hmm. This is still fine to freeze. Um, okay. In fact, one suggestion you could do is you could actually go ahead and, and peel it and slice the bananas, mm -hmm. and then you can mix it in, uh, put it in a baggie, and 
put a little um, strawberries or, or what have you in it, and you can just pull it out, and you've got your your smoothie mix, pre-mixed, um, pre-sorted berries mm -hmm. and bananas, and mix it all up. And right. Take your baggie and dump it out, and, and right. you've got your smoothie fruit ready to go. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. All right. Moving on. Talk to me about bread. Oh, bread is so easy to freeze. It'll last for a while, but not forever. Right. So what do you do? You can actually just put the whole thing in your freezer. Just sit and uh, freeze it like this. Okay. Now, once you, you know, to be honest, once you thaw it out, it's not quite as fresh mm -hmm. um, feeling, but it makes, it still makes perfectly good sandwiches, makes good toast. Okay. Um, so. If you wanted to use it to go ahead and, and make um, croutons or... All right. Um, so with croutons, you could just cube this up and mm -hmm. maybe sprinkle some olive oil, right. some garlic salt, toast it, and mm -hmm. then you've got your homemade crouton. So you're right. saving that, that stale bread from, or from, even if it's not very stale, you could just go ahead and, and save it that way. Right. Okay. Or if you don't mind it not being, you know, as fresh as just, just bought. Like day old, old mm -hmm. bread kind of thing. Yeah, day old mm -hmm. bread. Uh, mm -hmm. My kids don't mind it at all. You, and you find it on sale, you can actually mm -hmm. stock up on it and just put it in mm -hmm. your freezer. So if you have a bread store nearby, this would be mm -hmm. a terrific way to save money. Um, but since we're talking about things you've already bought that you don't want to go um, bad, even half a loaf, if you know you're not going to get to right. it, you could go ahead and put it in the freezer. Exactly. And that would be okay? Right. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's move on and talk about meat. This is some chicken that um, I was going to cook for you for dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we didn't. We went to Grandma's house and she cooked for us instead. So I don't want this chicken to spoil. Meats are expensive and we're not going to get to this in the next few days. So what can I do with this chicken? It's already been frozen and thawed. Now what? Poor chicken. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and cook it. Okay. Um, the best thing to do would be go, to go ahead and boil it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can either chop it, dice it, mm -hmm. put it in a baggie, a freezer bag, and freeze it. Or you could go ahead and shred it if you wanted to make it like taco meat. Okay. Um, if you haven't tried shredding it in your cooking mixer, like your KitchenAid uh, or your something your kitchen like aid, that, that mm -hmm. works wonderful yeah. for shredding chicken. Okay. Um, and you could, even, if you knew exactly what you wanted to use this chicken for, you could mm -hmm. even go ahead and add the spices to it. Like the seasoning or mm -hmm. the, the teriyaki and the like marinade taco or whatever. seasoning, whatever. Okay. Um, and then you've got it ready for when okay. you do want it. So even though I've thawed it, I can mm -hmm. cook it up and refreeze it and it's good. Right, because you don't okay. want, once you thaw something out like this, you don't want to refreeze it right. until so it's been cooked. Be the same thing with ground beef. Ground turkey, sausage, sausage, whatever. Any kind of meat yeah. that we've already thawed and we want to save, mm -hmm. otherwise it's going to spoil and we don't right. want that. Groceries are too expensive. So. Right. Go ahead and cook it up. All right. Good deal. All right. Moving on. Let's talk about dairy. What can you do with dairy? Because I think a lot of people don't realize what you can do mm -hmm. and what you can freeze with your dairy products. So okay. Tell me about that. Your sour cream, your cottage cheese, your yogurt, yes, you can freeze them. Okay. Um, keep in mind that the consistency, because of the water content in mm -hmm. these items, won't, the consistency once it's thawed out won't be quite the same. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use them for baking purposes, mm -hmm. um, then it's fine. Um, some people will still eat it, even though the consistency has changed just a bit. But if you're using it for baking or for your smoothies or mm -hmm. what have you, it's so you may just not want to put that dollop of sour cream right on exactly. your potato. It might taste a little different, but it's right. fine to use in a casserole or a smoothie exactly. or, or those kinds of things. Right. It works okay. fine, and you can freeze these for months. Okay, great. Is there any trick to defrosting? Um, room temperature, just put them No, in. you're going to want to put um, defrost it in your refrigerator. In your refrigerator. Okay. How about cheese? I cheese. buy a big, you know, the big thing from Costco because mm -hmm. we have five kids, and cheese does not usually go to waste around here, but sometimes... Right. We will be busy and not get to that whole thing. Right. So what can right. I do with it? Well, you can actually freeze it. You can freeze the whole block of cheese. The trick to keeping it from being um, dry and crumbly or mushy or whatever is after, when you're ready to defrost it, you want to completely defrost it before you put it into your refrigerator. Okay. And so um, you just leave it out on your counter mm -hmm. for just a few hours. You wouldn't want right. to do it overnight. Yes. Just just a few hours until you can yes. tell it's all the way thawed. Right. Let it completely defrost. That's the trick to keeping it um, from getting dry or crumbly. Okay. Um, what about shredded cheese? Well, if you wanted to shred it beforehand, you can do that. But then to keep it from getting all sticky, um, you're going to want to put just a little bit of cornstarch or flour okay. in it in the bag and just shake it up. Okay. Not, not a so lot, just a little, just a little bit. bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Now, how about milk? Yes, you can freeze milk. But the trick is you're going to want to empty uh, a cup or two out of the original container because once it freezes, 
it's going to expand mm -hmm. and you don't want the container to burst, okay. that would be not yeah. good. That wouldn't be saving right. money. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and open it up, give your kids a glass or two. And have it yourself. Uh, have it yourself <laughs> and right. then and then put it in the freezer and it'll be fine. Now it might look a little yellow, a little watery. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to separate a little bit as it's freezing, but mm -hmm. once it's thawing out mm -hmm. in your refrigerator, so after, you thaw this in your refrigerator, exactly, not yes, out? No, okay. thaw it in your refrigerator, okay. and then after it's thawed out, you won't even know it was ever frozen. You sure? Positive. Have you tried it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. All right, so those were just the things that I pulled out of my refrigerator or my counter. These are actual ingredients that if we don't do something with quick, they're going to spoil. Mm -hmm. I am great at menu planning, but life happens, and now we have this stuff that I either use it or lose it. So right. I'm sure there are many other things that you can look in your own pantry or on your you know, counter, if you keep your vegetables there or whatever, and um, look around and see, hey, I better use that up or I'm going to lose it. Mm -hmm. So for more money saving tips and tricks, you can visit our website at buildamenu.com. Thanks. Thank you. That was good. Mm -hmm. You're so smart. I know. <laughs>